What is up, everyone? First of all, Merry Christmas for 2015. Happy Holidays, uh, Happy New Year, and everything in between. What an amazing, amazing year. Welcome to Merry NJ08. If you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, me and my little Jack Russell Mario are hanging out like we've been for years. Um, I've been actually doing this on the channel, my Christmas Spectacular and my uh, special year-end wrap-up series. I've been doing this since 2008. Every year, everybody looks forward to my game of the year. And I think it's because they know that it's coming from a trusted gamer that's actually played these games all year. You could go back through the year, look on my channel, uh, playthroughs, reviews. I've actually, you know, hands-on, on camera, played all these games. So everybody knows, you know, um, I have a say in this because I've played them firsthand. I've talked about them on Twitter. A little bit of reviews here and there. First impressions throughout the year as I was playing these titles. What was I thinking of them? So everybody says, you know, wow, I can't wait. The end of the year, he's going to finally give his game of the year. We trust it. We know it's, you know, it's really from him. He's not sponsored. He's not, you know, nobody sends him promotional copies. He's a real gamer. He stands in line at GameStop every year. He buys the games. So it's real raw, unedited footage and thoughts of my personal game of the year. Not basing it on what everybody else's list is. Um, not basing it on the title of the game, it's based on, or the hype, it's based on me taking the game in my hand, putting it in my machine, and playing it, and what I think of it. And let me tell you something, I know I've, this is cliche, and I may have said this through the years. This list was hard. I, I've been working on this list for quite a while, through the month of December and even November, everybody knows that I've been taking time away from the streams and the and the playthroughs and really taking my time this year with this list because this list was not easy for me this a lot of years sometimes I just know automatically and it wasn't so much what was going to go on the list and what was going to go on an honorable mentions list because I have that too and that's just as important because basically what it, to me is, is it's two things with this list fighting the spot for first and second it was tough this year let me tell you, I wish I could give two games Game of the Year, but I don't think it's fair. And even though deep down in my heart of hearts, I want both these titles to win, I knew, I knew only one could. But believe you me, when you see who got, got second this year, trust me, it's huge. It's nothing that you would expect. Again, this really was going to be my Game of the Year until something else came out and took its place. And I'll explain why. But it, just so you know, it was neck and neck. And like I said, with the honorable mention, that could just as well be on Game of the Year too because I didn't want to have like a 20-game list. So I split it half and half. So the second half is, well, actually the first half is honorable mention and then the second half is Game of the Year. Because, But really, they're all my Game of the Years. But you know, how many Game of the Years on a list can you have? That's why I have honorable mention. And I'll explain uh, why they got on that list, too, and not on the top. So, without further ado, for my, I don't know, since 2008, here is my 2015 Game of the Year drum roll. We've all been waiting for this for my year-end wrap-up series. This is one of the biggest of the year on my series, one of the biggest... I think this is one of the biggest videos of Murray and Jay Wait every year. This is the one that everybody looks forward to. So here you go. Just for you guys, I want to take the time also and say thank you. Thank you for the support. We're not a huge gaming channel here. We're small time. It's been that way since 2008. I'm happy with it. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, we don't worry about views here, subscriptions here, hype. We're a good small-time channel. We've got a great community. I've built up a great uh, viewer base. We had fun this year playing games together. During the month of December, I did viewer appreciation, subscriber appreciation. Thank you so much. And also, thank you to the developers. The small time, the big time. You know, I noticed with this game of the wards and all this, it's like this big thing now that people are mentioning game, small dev appreciation. I've been saying it since 2008. <laughs> And of course, I have a small voice, so it's not getting it to the mass majority of the people in the world, but 
I would play a game, like an indie game or a big game or a small game, and I would actually say, wow, look at the important people in these credits that play these games, that half of them aren't even going to ever be noticed. You know, you usually only see the big director or the big game publisher, you know, or the CEO of a company. What about all the other people in the credits? I've been saying that. You can go back on my channel. I've been saying that since 2008. I have a huge respect for gamers. And, you know, I was going to do a Most Disappointed Games this year. I'm not going to do it. You know why? There's games that I were disappointed on, but you know what? It's not fair to those people that busted their butt. Just because a game didn't come out perfectly doesn't mean it's their fault. They're, the, they're hard workers that stood hours in the studio to work on these games. I have huge respect for that. So... You know, I know some people just came out and said it and they got huge publicity because they are who they are. I've been saying it since 2008. That's the reason why I started this channel. And I have the most utter respect for those people. You know, so hats off to all the people in the credits that work diligently on these games, whether it's in music, production, art, photography. You guys are awesome. And that's why I play your games every year. And that's why I spend thousands upon thousands of my own dollars, not from a company that I spend. So whatever tiny little bit of AdSense or whatever I make from these videos, I go to GameStop and buy those games. And that's why you're hearing the truth from a person that buys them. And, uh, it, you know, it's right there in line with you guys. Game of the year, 2015. Number 12 is Mario Maker. Now, these are from least to best. Now, the reason why I got 12 is I almost wasn't going to put this in the list because it's not really a game. It's a game creator. But then I said to myself, you know what? No, 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 no. Bull crap. It is a game. There's actually thousands of hours worth of gameplay in this game because users can create their own games and you can play them. So it's actually endless amounts of content. It's not like putting in a Mario game and playing the levels and then you're done. This never ends. The more the community plays and creates, the more you can play and create. So And, and it's also based on gameplay and fun. This list, number one to get on this list, it's not graphics, it's not hype, it's not even... Um, the length of the game, it's fun. Did I have fun with it? Whether it was an hour game or a six hour game or a 60 hour game, did I have fun with it? Yeah, Super Mario Maker, I had tons of fun. It's a great quality product. I absolutely loved it. And um, it's on my game of the year list because I think it's that good. 11, Batman Arkham Knight. I'm actually a huge fan of the Arkham series, a huge fan. Batman fan, um, I thought that the Arkham games were fantastic. Um, I even liked Origins, but the Rock City games were always top grade. I know that the PC had a little bit of problems, well, a lot of problems. Um, <clears throat> fortunately, I was able to play it on the PlayStation 4, and I, I, I thought it was great. Um, graphics were outstanding. If I could have the best graphics in art direction, I would say that would be in my top. Uh, and um, Batman Arkham Knight, check it out. And please, if you didn't check out any of these games, even the games that make my honorable mention, please go out and buy them and check them out. They're worthy of you checking them out if I mention them here. Believe me, I play every indie game, every triple A, every digital, every store bought, every DLC. I pretty much play in a, in a year's time everything. I mean, I cover it. And even if you don't see it on the channel here, I'm behind the camera, behind the scenes playing it. So you can get my view of uh, what came out this year and what I think of it. Because I spend my time with them. And believe, like I said, for a small-time gamer on a channel like this, I play them all. Uh, 10, Halo 5. It's definitely an awesome game. I'm a huge Halo fan. The multiplayer is fantastic. I'm having a blast. I'm playing it with my subscribers right now. Every night I notice I'm getting right on. Um, the campaign wasn't the greatest. Maybe that's why it got down to a 10 and not higher up. But you know what? Anywhere on this list is good. And it's really, personally, the story wasn't that incredibly bad as people are making it. Everybody has a strong opinion. And a lot of times people really go to the next level with their opinions. A lot of times if somebody says something is that good, it's usually not. And if somebody says something's that bad, it's usually not. Um, but the, the community has a strong voice. And there's a lot of people that agree and a lot of people that don't agree. But... It's got a spot here, number 10, Halo 5. Check it out. 
Uh, nine is Splatoon. Wow. Hats off to Splatoon. A brand new IP, brand new franchise, brought in from Nintendo. Nobody really knew if it was going to take off or not. I absolutely love it. It's fun. It's different. It's not always about going in and killing everybody and shooting everybody and getting kill sprees and... It, it's a nice game that the family can get together with. Nintendo's known for that. Get together with the family, play a nice game. It's not violent or nothing. But it's fun, though. Nintendo has that fun factor. That's why Nintendo games always make my list. There's, there's one thing about Nintendo. Quality. A quality product and fun. Polished. And you can trust them when you buy their games. Um... Splatoon is no different. You definitely want to check out Splatoon. Hours of fun on the channel. Go back. I've been playing it through the years. I used it for my Easter special. Um, no, I didn't use it for my Easter special. I, I played, I had like a marathon of it in, in the spring in May. I, I forget. But anyway, because um, it came out around in May, I believe. Yeah. Uh, played Splatoon throughout the year. Had marathon streams of it. Had holiday streams of it. Um, used it a lot on my channel. Excellent game. 8, Mortal Kombat X, love fighting games. Uh, Mortal Kombat was the first Mortal Kombat on, on next gen, uh, PS4, and Xbox One. Uh, love the game, love the characters. There's new characters announced for next year. Excited about that. The guest characters. Um, the game looked really good. It was fun. Huge Mortal Kombat fan, what can I say? I've, I've been following Ed Boon since the beginning, and I, I love what he's done with the franchise. Um, 7, okay, this is... This is interesting. Okay. Rocket League. What a fun, fun game. This this is the whole thing I've been trying to talk about when I mentioned fun. Not story mode, not length of game, not cutscenes production. Sure, sure. It all cuts it all counts, sure. But fun. Fun like back in the day when I used to turn my NES on and blow into the cartridge and have fun for hours with a simple game. Our Atari. That's what it's all about. That's Rocket League. I'm not even going to explain the game. All you got to do is just go and get it. Go, get it on PSN or wherever you get your digital games from. Play Rocket League. I was lucky enough to get it when it was a PlayStation Plus game, so I didn't pay for nothing. Um, and now I'm even hearing that a lot of the DLC is free. Excellent, excellent value. Just a fun game. Fun game to play online. Fun game to play with your buddies. Endless amounts of fun. Again, that's what this list is about. Fun. And how much time I spent in a game. And this is definitely one of them. Rocket League. Check it out. <clears throat> Alright, six. Here's a big one. Now this is a real... There's a story about this. Six is Life is Strange. An episodic game that you play, just like The Walking Dead... Let me just say that when I started playing this game in January, February, whenever the first episode went live, they're like five bucks an episode. I said to myself, I know this is the very beginning of the gaming year, but I may have found my game of the year. I honestly said that. If it wasn't for all the other games that came out that were completely amazing, this game could have won too. It made six on my list. That's because a lot of others surpassed it. But Life is Strange to me was awesome. The art style was freaking fantastic. I liked the fact that it was episodic and you couldn't wait till the next episode to come out. And they always left that a cliffhanger. I thought the story was freaking fantastic. I loved the characters. Chloe, Max, Warren. See, I remember them all. I, I remember everybody from the first episode because it stuck to me. I loved it. I'm very passionate about certain things that happen in games, and I really liked the direction of this. I liked the originality of it. I liked how different it was. Oftentimes, playing Life is Strange, I said to myself, how often does this happen in a game? How often? I don't want to say nothing because I don't want to spoil, but I wish I could. But just certain things that happen, like things that happen at the end of the third season, things that happen during the first episode, things that happen during the last... Those of you that play the game know what I'm talking about. It's just like I said to myself, where? Like I was remember to explain this game to a couple people at the dinner table, and they're like, "That's in a game," and I'm like, "Yeah." What situations do you know of that are in game that 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 happens in in a game? That's Life is Strange. 
definitely explore new areas of a gamer. Um, you could not even be into games and love this game. It's freaking fantastic, in my opinion. Life is Strange, please check it out. It was almost my contender of the winner of the year um, when it first, the first episode came out. <clears throat> I, uh, if it wasn't for everything else that came out, it would have been way higher. But Life is Strange is absolutely a must to play this year. And I see next year they're coming out with a hard copy of it on a disc. I may even get that for collector purposes or play it with different options, different choices. That's another thing, too. You get a lot of gameplay out of it because you can go back and you can change your outcomes. And believe you me, a lot of things that you do does change the outcome. I know a lot of games say that, and it always winds up panning out the same. But, again, I'm into different games and, and things that are not of the norm, so this is one of them. All right, five. Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Woo! Oh, my God. It's not his game of the year. It's not second. It's not third. Woo! Listen. This list is hard to get on, so anywhere on this list is amazing, even my honorable mentions list. Again, this is all one big game of the year list. Um, that's, that's good, uh, being five of my game of the year. I'm not a massively obsessed Metal Gear fan, probably why it's fifth, but I don't base it on that. I base it on how much time I played, how much I enjoyed the game, and out of who's in head, ahead of it, that's where it placed, my honest opinion. I could have been a fan favorite and, and please everybody and said it's my game of the year. Kojima is God, even though he's a freaking amazing mastermind. And also, if you're watching this by the time of this recording, uh, he just signed a deal with Sony. So congratulations to him um, on that move. Uh, mad respect. Metal Gear Solid 5, the my phone is going off. Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. Amazing game. And you definitely want to check it out. Believe you me, um, if a lot of games could be number one on my list, I would make them number one. But there has to be a placement. And uh, owe it to yourself to play Metal Gear. It's one of my favorite Metal Gears. I'll tell you that right now. Just the amount of stuff that you could do, Mother Base, the customization, this, that, and the other thing, the graphics, uh, the music, well done. Excellent game. Love it. The Companions, great game. Four is The Witcher 3, a game that you pay 60 bucks for and you freaking get your money's worth. Isn't that nice? Let me tell you, a game that you can actually really, really, really um, enjoy, 60 bucks later, you get, your, you know, I don't know how many countless hours I've spent on it. Money well spent. I love games like that, like Skyrim. Um, and, and, and Dragon Age, and just games that are really long, but good, though. There's a difference. You could A game can drag on and be long, doesn't necessarily be good. This game was awesome. Loved the side content. Um, loved the whole thing that CD Projekt Red is doing. Hats off to CD Projekt Red. I told them this throughout the year, the day Witcher 3 came out. I went on their Twitter and told them, all, all congratulations, you did a wonderful job. Back in the day when the game first came out. Um, and even before that with, with uh, CD Projekt Red, I've been a huge fan. And said many great things about them. The whole free DLC model, um, giving you 16 updates throughout, you know, the, the, the next few months when the game released. Everything was free. Um, and really, just a phenomenal game. The Witcher 3 is definitely a game that you, you can't rush through and you got to have time and take your time. But um, it's definitely a game that when you do get time to sit down with and play. And three is Bloodborne. Okay, we're getting into crunch time. The top three. These are th the top three is important because the top three all could have been number one. This is what I spent days and days and weeks even contemplating who's going to win. This is it. Bloodborne. So all these are really potential winners deeply in my opinion. But like I said, I can only make one. Uh, again, hours and hours of gameplay. Can't get your money's worth enough. Absolutely phenomenal boss battles, amazing graphics, great customization, great leveling up, great, you know, storylines, great characters, well, I don't know, characters, bosses. Um, love the hub world, the hunter's dream, um, the DLC was, was well, <laughs> amazing but very hard, but again, that's what this game is. Again, this game is not for the faint of heart, this game is a tough game, um, especially New Game Plus. 
This is definitely, um, if, if you're not familiar, uh, it's from some, from somewhere, from software, um, from software, it's, um, Dark Souls, Demon Souls, it's in that line of, of series, um, it's just Bloodborne, it's its own thing, it's not like Dark Souls 3 or 4 or 5 or whatever, or Demon Souls, it's Bloodborne, but it's the same kind of game, it fits in the world, um, uh, but it's kind of like its own thing at the same time, um, Bloodborne is awesome. All I can tell you is, especially if you're a big fan of From Software, if you're a big fan of Dark Souls, Demon Souls, you owe it to yourself to play Blood, Bloodborne. It ain't the easiest thing in the world, but it's rewarding. And when you do progress in it, you pat yourself on the back. Bloodborne is definitely uh, going to be number one on a lot of people's lists. I can guarantee you that. Any one of these uh, next few are number ones. Now, now that I got that out of the way, let's uh, address the elephant in the room. One and two, if there ever, ever, ever was a showdown, it's the next two. I'm telling you right now, they're both the number ones in my honest opinion. And I hope this, I hope number two on my list is a lot of number ones on people's lists. I don't know if it will be. <clears throat> the crazy thing about it is, is that I want it to be the guy that people say, you know, Murray and Jay Wait, did you know who won his cut? His game of the year. Do you know that this game won? I wanted people to say that because I wanted to. I wanted to stand out because I know a lot of people maybe aren't gonna make this their number one because it's gonna be obvious who the number one is gonna be. But it's not because of that. It's because I truthfully felt it because believe you me, I wanted people going around saying Murray and Jay Waits number one was so and so. Can you believe that? Because I freaking love this game. And I'm gonna tell you right now, number two is Until Dawn. Yeah. And this is this was number one up until the last minute. And I'm going to tell you why it dropped down to two when I tell you my winner. But believe you me, Until Dawn is freaking awesome. Here's a game that came out of nowhere. Well, not that it came out of nowhere. Some massive games have been working on this for a long time. Actually, I believe it originally was worked on the PS3 for the PlayStation Move. But whatever. An IP, a franchise that we never heard of, brand new, you know, took a chance was promised a lot of things, and I think the more we heard about this game, we're like, eh, it looks good on paper, it looks good at E3, what they're showing, but it's, is it going to really pan out to be like that? It, it's better. Amazing story, amazing characters, amazing graphics, graphics, top of the, of the year. Um, the choices really change the game. You get a lot of hours of gameplay because there's multiple endings. There's multiple ways. You can play this game and save everyone. You can play this game and kill everyone. You can kill this person but save this person. You can save this person but kill this person. And there's like over like 50 or whatever alternations that you can change the game and get different endings. Believe you me, I was so engrossed in this game and enjoying this game so much that I went back and played every freaking ending. And I still have my save file where I can go back to chapters and change set stuff because there's so many different configurations of the game. The game is fun. The game is freaking awesome. I've gotten people into this game that aren't even into video games. That pe Every day people are like, like my mom even, hey, Sean, you know, can we play Until Dawn tonight? You know, I want to see what happens with Mike or I want to see what happens with um, Sam and, and uh, I want to see what happens to Matt if, you know, blah, 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 and Emily. And then uh, and then she's like, you going to play Until Dawn again? Because, you know, even if they're like sitting back and watching like a soap opera or a movie, you know, and then they want to get in and they want to do the controls and because there's no way to fail this game. This game is so friendly for everyone. You can't pick the controller up and fail. You may not get the ending you want or the, the uh, you know, the consequence and effect that you want, but you can't fail. The game continues. The game is so well freaking done. I love this freaking game. This was my game of the year when I played it. Uh, and then the total twist where when you think it's about something but it's really not. It's actually about something else. And then when you see this freaking thing, and I'm going to tell you something else too, scared shitless. This game freaking scared the shit out of me. I mean, scared the shit out of me. This game was scary. I played this at night with my Turtle Beach headset in the dark. And let me tell you, I'm not afraid to say it. I jumped a freaking whole crap load of times. But this game is just awesome. And, I'm, and right now, Here's the drum roll, because this is going to tie into this. My number one, if you haven't figured it out already, my number one game of the year is Fallout 4. And not because it's Fallout, okay? 
I'm not gonna lie, I knew the game was gonna be freaking amazing. Todd Howard is a freaking genius. I freaking love him. Fallout 3 is, is on my list of greatest games of all time. Elder Scrolls is on my list of greatest games of all time. Fallout 4 is that good in my opinion. Because believe you me, I wanted Until Dawn to win. I even wanted Bloodborne to win. But I couldn't deny the fact that my heart of hearts, that I was saying to myself, it's all about how much time I spent in the game and the hundreds of hours and money well spent, and it goes to Fallout. Sure, Until Dawn I got more than my money back. Bloodborne I got more than my money back. Metal Gear, more. Witcher. But Fallout did it. And, I, and Fallout was another game that I got people that really weren't even into video games and loved it. Like, people that are into crafting, the whole new crafting element. People that I know that are just obsessed with Minecraft. They're like, Sean, we want to watch you build. We're into this, you know? Go do the missions and the side quests, but we, we want to watch you build. There was something for everyone in Fallout. And Fallout, Fallout had so much massive content. Um, sure, it had its glitches that we're, that are, we're, we're used to and known for. Not that it gets a pass. It had its bugs. But in the end of the day, I have to say to myself, did I get my $60 worth? And not only did I get my $60 worth, did I have fun? Just because a game is long also doesn't give it a pass as being good. Is it fun for that long? During that time that I spent playing Fallout, did I have fun? Yes. I had a freaking blast. I loved Fallout. I thought Fallout was an amazing, amazing game. And that's why it got my number one. And let me tell you something. It was a tough list. A lot of these I wanted to win. Like I said, I'm obsessed with Until Dawn. I'm an Until Dawn freak. I freaking love the game. I tweeted them. I wrote about it. I vlogged about it. Blogged about it. Fallout, uh, Until Dawn is freaking awesome. And so is Bloodborne. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, there's got to be a winner. And I looked at how much time I spent and how much fun I spent and everything. And it's Fallout 4. But I believe deeply that all these games on this list are winners and I know that and hats off to the you guys hats off to the developers of these games you did a freaking fantastic job I'm gonna get right into my honorable mention Resident Evil Revelations 2 awesome Dying Light really should have been on my uh, game of the year list it really really should have it should have been tied with 12 um, <clears throat> with Mario Maker or even if I had a top 13 um, but again, all these games are the, are the best games of the year. Dying Light is freaking awesome. you got to check Dying Light out. I loved it. Another game that I spent a lot of time with. Forza 6. I can't deny the fact Forza 6 is awesome. I love racing games. I got a lot of money, uh, play, game time worth of money with that game. Um, racers are endless, like sports games. You can play them and play them and play them. Uh, uh, stunning graphics, stunning visuals, great car list. So much better than Forza 5. Forza 6 is awesome. I've been with Forza since the beginning. Um, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. They're on this list because the game is awesome. <clears throat> Leaps and bounds from Unity. They did get their stuff together. They made a better game. They listened to a lot of the fans. Assassin's Creed Syndicate is awesome. You definitely should check it out. If you skipped because of Unity and you, you know, you've been burnt out for the few years. And last year they, they released that in Rogue. And you're like, oh, all this Assassin's Creed. Wait, either wait for it to go on sale or a little cheaper or whatever if you're worried, but <clears throat> purchase a Syndicate. You're going to like it, especially if you've played all the other ones. You might as well. Um, Axiom Verge, another indie game uh, that I downloaded digitally off of PSN. Awesome game. Awesome, awesome game. This this very well could have been on my game of the year, too. Um, Ori and the Blind Force, again, another amazing indie game. Uh, fantastic game. Gorgeous game. Yoshi's Woolly War. I'm freaking loving this game. I'm playing it on my channel. Um, I'm doing a playthrough for the holiday. Um, it's phenomenal art design. Uh, kind of like, um, if you remember, Kirby's Epic Yarn. A great little platformer. Cute as hell. Would win cutest game of the year. Um, a quality product from Nintendo. You definitely want to check it out. It's, it's a great game. It's a well-made game. Rise of the Tomb Raider. I love it. I feel bad that, you know, the PlayStation people can't play it. And it's funny, too, because I always associated Tomb Raider as being a PlayStation game. But um, it is what it is, you know. It's all about marketing and, you know, who pays for what. But you definitely should check out Rise of the Tomb Raider. If you're going to wait for the PlayStation, okay. But um, <clears throat> get your hands put on a buddy that's got an Xbox One or whatever, and you got to play this game. It's, uh, it's I love it. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good Tomb Raider game. 
The Taken King, I can't deny not mentioning The Taken King. Um, again, talking about hours spent in a game, Destiny. It isn't a DLC, it is an expansion, but I think it's big enough to mention in the honorable mention list. Um, and I did have loads of fun with The Taken King. I had fun with my subs. I play it every night, and um, it's ongoing. We know we just did the Sparrow Racing. We're waiting for the next Iron Banner. Um, I've been leveling up past 300 light. Uh, Destiny talk, so warn you, incoming. Um, so I could not not mention The Taken King. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, what can I say? Excellent game. I mean, <clears throat> you you know, think about it. You're getting a, a campaign. You're getting zombies mode. You're getting multiplayer. There's a lot of content here, and it's very fun. Uh, I've been playing it all month long. You definitely should check my channel out. Black Ops 3, a really good Call of Duty game. Can't go wrong with Call of Duty. They really know what they're doing. And they do come out with a quality product every year. And if I didn't mention them, I wouldn't feel it would be fair. You know, it's one of those things that's cool to hate. Just like this next one, Star Wars Battlefront. Hey, listen, I had fun. I like it that you could just jump in and play. You don't have to be some, you know, amazing first person or third person, whatever player. And you have to be like, you know, this awesome Call of Duty or Battlefield player. I like it that it has that friendly, you know, feel that, you know, just anybody can jump in. Don't forget, you're going to get a lot of video game people playing this. And you're going to get a lot of Star Wars fans playing this. So, to me, this kind of caters to both. Amazing sound, amazing sound effects, music, amazing graphics. One of the top gorgeous of the year. Um, it's Star Wars. It, it's a quality product. I had fun with it. I liked it. Sure, it could have been better. Sure, it could have used a story campaign. But it's on my honorable mention. Check it out. Guitar Hero Live and Rock Band 4. Love music games. And uh, I've been playing a lot at my friend's house, Rock Band 4. And I've been doing a lot of reviews of it there. And I've had a lot of time with my cousin uh, with Guitar Hero Live. I did purchase both my own. Uh, we're getting them for the family for the holidays. We're all going to be playing on Christmas Day. We're going to do half Rock Band 4, half Guitar Hero Live. Um, they're fun. You can't go wrong. They're music games. They're, uh, they're a blast to play. Great with, with f friends and family. <clears throat> and the last game that I want to talk about on my honor... Well, this isn't on my honorable mention. But I'm going to mention the game anyway. Because, again, with that whole gamer developer thing and appreciation and hats off to them and the hard work, I cannot finish this video without mentioning The Order 1886. We all know it had its problems. It was well hated. Not really. It's not, not to me it wasn't. And I'm going to tell you something. First of all, visually it wins Game of the Year for graphics. There, there is nothing that comes near it. I don't know what they did, what kind of engine, what they did with that game, but the game was freaking awesome. Again, it's not all about graphics, but I, I gotta give props where props is due. Um, I mean, it didn't make my lists. I'm, not, I'm just gonna say it's honorable mention because I liked the game. The game was short. I, I played it in like one or two sittings. It wasn't really what we were promised. Like. What they showed in the trailers really didn't happen a lot in the game. But they're on to something. Nobody can deny the fact that they were on to something. They just need to, to they need to fix it. They need to implement it. They need to work on it. You know, had like a cliffhanger kind of ending. The story campaign didn't really go where we wanted it to go. It was promised that the campaign was going to do other things. But the game is well made. I didn't have any glitches. I didn't have any bugs. That's something to say. Um, yeah, it wasn't that long of a game, but I did have fun in the campaign. I did. Um, I don't want to really talk about this, what happened in the campaign and what didn't happen in the campaign, because it's not fair for people that want to, I think you can get the game for like 20 bucks. Buy it. Play the game for 20 bucks, okay? Okay, paying 60 is one thing. Of course, I did that because I do it for the channel. But buy the game. It's worth your purchase. Um, hats off to the Order 1886, because... The game was a quality game. I just wish it was more. That's all. But it's there's things as a bad game and there's things as a not bad game. This is not a bad game. Okay. It's not game of the year. It's not game of the century. It's not mind-blowing. It's not like, oh my god, you know, this is an amazing, amazing game. But it did do a lot of things uh, good. And it's a freaking gorgeous game. I remember playing it on stream on Twitch. Saying to my subs, dude, this game is sick looking. 
And I and I thought that the controls were fine. I did think that overall the campaign was like just like with the campaign with Halo 5. I mean, it wasn't mind blowing or game breaking, but I had fun. And really, at the end of the day, that's all you could have from a game. Did you have fun? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for taking the time with me today and spending the time on my channel and watching this video. It means the world to me. Love your feedback. Again, thank you so much for tuning in to my year-end wrap-up series, my game of the year of 2015. It was a fun year. I can't wait to join you in 2016 and start all over again with you. Hope you join me. Take care, Merry Christmas, and Happy Holidays.